squat, I'm on the squat, and he didn't play the fire on the green, went to one of green. He had a son of the very worst kind, and you know pretty well what I mean, what I mean, you know pretty well what I mean. I guess in many ways I am a jack of all trades, but when people come up to me and say, you're that music man, that always tickles my fancy. Warren is a kind of, um, oh, he describes himself as a larrikin, everything about him is a larrikin. The larrikin publishing, the larrikin records, the larrikins as a band. The thought of leaving Fowler's Bay, it breaks me heart in two. He's gone and saved these songs, these songs that were about to disappear. He's gone out into the field, he's gone into the libraries, he's found them and he's preserved them. Warren is the first person to actually bring the great world music boom to Australia. The most important part of tonight is to recognise uh, the efforts of somebody who has made an enduring and substantial contribution to Australian music. Congratulations to Warren Fay. Do you think that many people are still interested in this music, Warren, in, in Australian folklore, in bush music and Australia's musical history? I think there's a lot of young kids now coming up playing traditional instruments like the fiddle and the mandolin. Three hundred and sixty-five thousand people went to folk festivals last year. There's a lot of kids and it's fantastic. This music's about having fun and having a sense of culture. Kind of joyous and Warren feeds on that. He loves it and he gathers people around him from you know the three-year-olds to the 80-year-olds and that sense of community is amazingly live and well in Australia and it's turning out new music all the time. In recent times, there has been a huge revitalisation of folk music with people like Ash Grunwald and uh, John Butler Trio and so on. Songs that are being written today, uh, if they're story songs, are a continuation of this stream. Protest songs, songs of complaint, songs of documentation, that I think are really legitimate. They're songs written in the folk idiom. I don't really care a hoot about folk music coming back to the centre stage. It's never going to leave. I was born in Paddington, in a city suburb in New South Wales, in Sydney. My father used to always say, Paddington born and Paddington bred, strong in the arm and thick in the head. I grew up in the 40s and the 50s, before television. I also grew up around the piano, singing old time songs and listening to my parents sing ditties. I developed, I can only say, a great passion for story songs. What's that lovely toast that you used to do about the king? Before the king I once appeared. da 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 Places did they live in in the eastern suburbs here? I've only got ten fingers, ten, <laughs> ten toes. Ten toes, ten toes. I can't answer that question. Really, but I can. But they moved around a fair bit. Always one step ahead of the landlord. I can remember. <laughs> no. One step ahead of the landlord. I remember my mother's side, the Jewish side, being a large family, but not anything like the Irish Catholic side. Nine on one, sixteen on the other. He's such a classic combination of the two. Yeah. I mean, on one level, because, because both of them have got really rich musical traditions, and Warren is that kind of person who you often can't tell whether he's in an Irish pub or at a Jewish bar mitzvah.